All right, welcome back. This is take two, and we're doing gate 37, the gate of family and friendship. Today, the sun is in line six of the gate 37. I am running a little bit late in doing this for my uh, own commitment and schedule, and it's not, um, it's kind of an interesting um, energy that I found myself not meeting kind of the promise I've made on when the gate 37 is in the transit. Gate 37 is all about um, the bargain, um, the bargain of the tribe, the, the, it's the marriage contract, it's the friendship contract, and sometimes it's about uh, life and uh, work balance, as you will see in a minute. I'll, I'll recap this. I already started talking about this. Um, but it's not a coincidence, of course, that I kind of had to go back and say, wait, I don't know that I can, you know, do what I've said I will do, um, especially when this gate is in the uh, transit. It is a good time for us to uh, look back at agreements we've made, even with ourselves, right? Contracts, agreements, especially relationship agreements, um, and agreements around mutual support um, and agreements about work and rest. When are we gonna work? When are we gonna rest? And the support that we give each other in that, that is the business of Gate 37 and um, its friend across the channel and the polarity that it, it, it's, uh, when it's in the sun is in the earth, which is Gate 40. So I've said before, I'm mentioning this quickly here again, um, gate 37 and gate 40 are uh, only, I think there are three channels that um, where a polarity forms a channel. Uh, the other one is 23, 43, and I'm right now off the top of my head, I don't remember which one is the other one, but there are very few channels that actually are also polarity. So this is why we have a lot of people with the 40, 37, because whenever the sun is in one, the earth is going to be in the other. But whenever the nodes are in one, uh, the, if the south nodes is in the 40, the north node would be in the 37. So we have a lot of people with this gate. All right. So names, meanings, uh, quickly is a recap because I've already said that in the first take. Uh, it's a gate. Uh, the the traditional itching uh, name for the gate is called family duties. Um, which shows you the, the source from which Ra took this idea of this. This is the channel of the bargain, and the bargain is the bargain of the tribe. And the tribe is all about family relations and your, your immediate community or, you know, the community of, of your kin, of your blood. And, and it's about the bargain. Um, who does what, right? Okay. And then uh, Ra added the idea of, of friendship as well the bargain uh, of tribal community support. Uh, the idea that this gate is also about balance and harmony, especially between rest and work, comes out of traditional human design, but also from Karen uh, Car uh, Parker Carey's quantum uh, human design. She talks a lot of the time about the gate 37 as this place where we work to balance between um, um, work and rest. Uh, I'll talk a lot more about that. I think if 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 this holds and we still are online, uh, because Ra has a lot to say about that ego energy. The ego wants to work so that it could rest. The ego has to be honored uh, as a worker. The ego brings the energy to do the work, but it is not a sacral. It does not want to go on and on and on and on. The ego is the heart. It has this pulse of doing the work. And then it wants to come home and be, you know, given a cocktail and some sleepers. And like uh, the ego is like a 50s husband at once, a 50s wife. Too bad sometimes, right? Anyways, um, it's a gate of intense sociability. It's the most friendly of gates. Ra talks a lot about the 37 smile. I have the 37 and I don't have the 40. So, you know, you can judge uh, by the smile that I'm smiling to. He talks about this as a very friendly smile and a smile that emotionally hooks the ego. And we'll talk about the, the terms of that bargain, but basically come work for me. I will give you affection. You will give me work. I mean, it's, Looking at my life, it's it's not a lie. <laughs> I'm not I'm not angry about that description. All right, and then it's a place of loyalty or lack of loyalty because that's the language of the ego. That's the friendship 
language, love language of the ego, the only way Russ says to get the ego to do work is by promising the ego loyalty. And then also that is the place of promises, but also like promises made and broken. We will talk more about that very sometimes tricky relationship between the 37 and the 40 um, in in. Uh, when we get to this, but I will just say that uh, while the gate 37 is the gate of friendship and family and family duties, uh, it's polarity and it's mate, channel mate, right? Because the 40 is both its polarity and um, forms a channel, uh, is the gate of aloneness and aloofness. And so the 37 is like, hi, be my friend. And the 40 can be like, mm, yes or no, because it's a gate of uh um, caution. It's one of the caution, the gate of caution. All right. The location in the body graph. Uh, you can see here, that's just like a screenshot I took today. It's in between the solar plex and the ego. Um, part of the channel, uh, I said they're already 3740, which uh, is forms uh, in Ra's words, a design of a part seeking a hole and that that's the keynote for the entire channel so it's all about again tensions between being your own person and definitely when we have the ego uh in play it's 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 the ego has its kind of sense of its worth and then it's the place where the ego transcends that place of just me and can form relationships, but what kind of relationships and what kind of bargains uh, we will talk about. All right. Uh, in terms of, uh, because it's in the solar plexus, the, the keynote that Ra uses to talk about uh, it is the keynote, keynote of awareness, right? So if something is in the root, he talks about it as a fuel. If it's in one of the awareness centers, he talks about it as an awareness. And um, basically in the solar plexus, uh, that is a motor that's becoming an awareness. He talks about it as the awareness or clarity because it's emotional awareness, right? So it has to be achieved by traveling up and down the wave. Um, the clarity and the clarity is about who can or cannot provide what's needed, right? So the 37 of, right, sits here in the solar plex. And it's across from the ego and it's looking at the ego, it's pointed at the ego and it's good at assessing whether or not the ego across from the channel can provide what is needed or cannot provide what is needed. So if this sounds to you very similar to stuff we've talked about when we've talked about the, the 19 and the 49, you are absolutely correct. If you will look here, you will see that the 1949 is the continuation of that same stream. I'll show you in a minute, the circuit, right? And so that whole bargain of the tribe begins with the 19 and that pressure uh, to need, and, and it's all about needs and, and the needs of the tribe. And then the 49 sits there with the principles and says, I will decide if your needs, um, you know, if, if, you, if you belong at the dinner table of the tribe, because... Uh, whether or not you fit our principles. 49 is that gate of principle and it's a gate of acceptance and rejection. And then it goes into the 37, which is like that emotional, friendly, hi, ego, come on, come play with me, be my friend, be my my family member. You know, let's, let's, um, let's make a bargain together. You know, you'll support this and I'll do that. And the 40 that can say sure or no. So there's a lot of stuff going on in that whole stream that, that's not the easiest dance, if you will. Um, the 37 comes after the 55, six. So uh, again, I talked about it in the broadcast that got disconnected. Um, and I was talking about, this is part of the program, right? So last week, Sun was in the gate 55. And when we got to the 55 in line six, we go from there to 37 line one. Um, and Ra talks about the importance of that sequence is that the mutation um, that we talk about in the 55, right? Get 55 was the first very uh, individual and very mutative energy that the sun visited this year. And we are looking at the program of just the sun and where it travels uh, year round. So Ra talks about the fact that 
when the mutation would come in 2027, it would be when we will reach the 55 in the line six. And that's in the procession of the equinox. It's a different, um, it's a little bit of a different um, cycle. You guys, uh, uh, are, I will, I will uh, recommend and I can actually probably put some links to uh, Marianne, I think it's Weisinger. Marianne uh, was a uh, Ra's student and she does a lot of really interesting work on global cycles. And um, so I'm not going to go too much into that, but if you want to know more about it, let me know. And I will refer you to some um, good materials. But what I want to say about the 37 now, right, is that according to Ra, that is the place where from the height of the 55, which is a very individual, mutative, innovative, freaky um, energy, right? This is the place where the mutation can take hold. Where? Only in the tribe. So the individual is right in, involved in their own process of being innovative and mutative, Um and the individual wants to empower others to follow their example. The individual doesn't share, the individual doesn't support. They're not involved in that. They are about like doing their thing. And by being empowered in their own individuality, uh, they can empower others by example. When it, wherever you have individual, right? We're all a mix of all of these energies. Um, but when that, the place where the mutation can take hold in the entire of humanity is not the collective. It doesn't go from the individual to the collective. It goes through the individual to the tribe and only then to the collective. Um, and so that's an interesting thing to look at when you look at the progression of the gates around the sun, that the 55-6 then kind of feeds right into the 37 in line one. All right, so here is the place of uh, the gate 37 in the uh, tribal circuit. You can see here that whole the full circuit, and here we have it. Um, the, uh, the, the two sub circuits we have the uh, ego circuit and the defense circuit. Uh, the defense circuit is is what we talked a little bit about that last night, uh, last time because we were talking about the fifty nine. The defense circuit is is just this, just the six fifty nine and the twenty seven fifty, and um, basically the rest of the ego circuit is the ego circuit. And as I said to you before, it has. Um, it has all of, um, you know, it starts at, in the root of the 19 that goes into um, the solar plex. And here it goes all the way to the throat with the 2141, et cetera, et cetera. I won't talk about all of this 2644, um, et cetera, all, everything that, that, and then the 5432, which is a really interesting set of energies. We'll talk about all of these in due time. All right, so it's conditioned by the tribal emotional wave. The keynotes are support, loyalty, bargain, but also touch. Um, the, the, the whole uh, idea of, of the tribal keynotes. If you are new to human design or you're just getting deeper into human design, a, um, an important way to learn how to read a chart, right? When you read a chart, we tend to, and that's a warning from Ra, we tend to get lost in aspects. Right, this gate, this line, that center, this is open, this is uh, defined, this is undefined. Uh, maybe there's a bridge and there's a split, and we really can go uh, kind of get lost in all the aspects. But when you try to read a, a chart, you want to step back and you want to look at the bigger kind of picture that, that jumps at you from a chart. And one of the ways to do that is to really, really understand the keynotes uh, because. When you look at any gate in any line, it's in a circuit, it's in um, a specific part of, of, of the chart, and it's very important to read the narrowest definition of the gate you have in the line you have. The, you want to string it with the rest of what's going on, and the way you string it is by using keynotes. And so each sub-circuit has keynotes. So when you read any definition that you have in the, in the ego circuit, the keynotes that you want to use are support, uh, glue, meaning the glue that, you know, kind of glues the tribe together, uh, loyalty, the bargain, right? So you can talk about 
the 54 or the 32 or the 19 or the 45. It does not matter. And then, you know, even if you go into the specific of, let's say you have, um, I don't know, the, the, the 19 in line one, um, if you want to start stringing it and reading the chart to connect it to other things, you can say the 19 supports the 49 or the 19 supports, right? Or it would bring together the glue of this or that. You can use those keynotes to start stringing together the um, kind of the way the chart comes together with verbs, with action, right? So it supports, it's about loyalty, it's about the bargain, and it's about touching each other. The tribal people, uh, you know, uh, Ra talked about the 37, not only for our smile, and I identify with this, but also for the, he said that uh, we have a very nice hug. So if we ever meet in person, I'll give you a hug and we'll see. He said we are huggers. I am guilty as charged. All right. So the 37 is there to attract the ego out of his rest and into work. And as I said, I, I, I'm not angry about that description that I find that to be True, especially as a manifester, you know, and I'm a manifester without um, ego. I need the ego people around me. Like I find that I collabor collaborate a lot with people who do have the ego defined. And um, I maybe I attract them out of their rest and into work. Maybe I'm attracting you guys right now out of your rest and into work. Who knows? And then the 37 smile says, uh, says for the affection I'll give you, I'm going to get you to work. And, you know, Ross says that. All right, the nature of the 37, more. So it's the most communal of all gates, tells us, Ra. Uh, it's the place where the possibility exists to offer support to others, right? So it's not just that we take the 40 and we say, hey, get to work. It's also, I will offer friendship. I will offer support and you will work. <laughs> you will bring the work. I will bring that. All right, uh, it is a place of Focusing sensitivity for communal expression. Now, as we try to bring this into our discussion of human creativity, especially places where you can get stuck, which is my expertise to help to get you unstuck, it's interesting to look at each one of these words. And this is a direct quote from Ra, actually from, I don't have it here, from the book of letters, which I really love working with because this is where he, you know, kind of laid out these energies. Focusing sensitivity. So do you remember sensitivity is the keynote also for the 1949? We've talked a lot about that uh, energy of needing. And then uh, I talked about this in a minute, uh, already a minute ago, so I'm not going to do this. But it's interesting to look that as it goes from that wave in the solar plex and it goes into the ego, we're talking about focusing of that sensitivity. I am very, I have an ear for process and very process oriented and creativity for me is all about having a process and being process oriented. So another thing I really want to pay attention to is when, what energies help you get focused and stay focused. I'm, I have, I have uh, gate nine, which is the gate of focus and detail uh, defined like six times. So uh, this is why I am focused on the word focus, but Pay attention how this layers. It's like focusing of what? Of your sensitivity for what? For communal expression. Now, what is even, I'll stop for a minute. Like, what is communal expression? Pay attention. We have a really big um, balancing act and tension in our chart between individuality and the individual creative expression that for uh, for, for sake of debate today, I, will, I, wanna, I wanna highlight gate one which I have in line one in my conscious, uh, sorry, unconscious son, right? So gate one that says creative expression is independent of ego, independent of willpower and has its own predictable timing. So that's one side. That's an individual creativity. And on the other end, I would put that on the other end of the spectrum, I would put the kind of expression that the 37 is talking about. And this is the place of communal expression. I would present to you that this is the place of creative collaboration. I found, and again, I have a 37. Every freaking time I had a good collaboration. Uh, and, you know, I, I wrote many things in collaboration. I'm an academic in my background and we, we, you know, 
we published together and, and um, I've, I've done a lot of this. Uh, whenever I had a good cooperation, it was with A40. And when I got to tell you another thing, that like I think that I have not so great co collaborations when I'm collaborating with uh, somebody that has that full channel. And that's because then I'm compromised. Um, you know, if you only have half the channel, I have the 37. If you have just one gate and somebody has the whole channel, then you're compromised with them. That's what we call it in traditional human design. It's a compromise. Um, they basically control that situation. Now, that's going to work out according to type. I am a manifester. I don't, I need to be the one initiating. I don't need to be necessarily compromising so much when it comes to creative expression. And I also have the one in line one. So you can see that that can become a problem. So why am I telling you all of this? Because again, I am doing these transits, not just to tell you what's in the sun, but how that co correlates with what you might have going on in your creativity and especially places of creative blog. So ask yourself, um, what is going on in your creative relationships? Now, it can be somebody that you're collaborating with, but it can also be, uh, you know, anybody that you have a relationship with, that you have a bargain with, that might be helping, you know, take care of some of your responsibilities while you do creative work, if you have family, if you have kids. Um, it could be it could be a lot of different things, but that's a place that might get triggered, might get very um, uh, kind of con conflictual and, and, and create problems when this energy is in the transit. So communal expression, the places where you are expressing the spirit of the community, not just your individual creativity. All right. So as I said before, the 37 is kind of like the emotional hook for the 40, right? So it kind of hooks the ego. And this is important because this is the only way to hook the ego. Well, another place you can hook, uh, hook the ego is the spleen. Um, let me go back and show you uh, here when we when we look at that full cycle uh, circuit, sorry. You know, the 44, 20, the 44 in the spleen sits across from the 26 in the ego and it can hook the ego uh, a little bit differently. We'll, I'm sure we'll get to this when we get to the, there in the sun, but uh, the 44 is kind of the, 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 the gate that can kind of smell a rat can smell when something is funky and the 26 is the salesman. So the 44 is basically the administrator that can catch the salesperson when they're not doing their work and go like, go back to the office. You know, it's, it's hooking the ego to uh, basically not lie about how much work it's doing and to ask it to do the work. Um, but that's a whole other dance here. It's a little different, right? So it's like the emotional hook. This is where, the solar plex can find a way to get the energy needed from the ego in order to make a promise, enter a bargain, in order to do something, especially in collaboration. And again, as I said before, it's about, I'll give you my friendship, I'll give you my, um, my partnership, right? We can be a family, but you're gonna have to work. Um, the emotional support, drives the wheel. Now, these are all quotes from Ra and specifically from uh, the, the Book of Letters. The, the book, <laughs> from the book called From the Book of Letters, uh, he talks about how the ego needs the emotional support to drive it. So we tend to think that the ego is like the most powerful. It's not even, the sacral is more powerful than the ego. The sacral is more powerful than everything. We only have a gate of power in the sacral, which is the gate. 34. That's the only place where we talk about brute kind of uh, raw power. The ego is, is where we can make a commitment and prove and stick to it. But the ego is the heart and the heart needs rest. And the ego wants to work so that it can rest. And so it's not a motor that works 24 seven, like the sacral. So it's a little bit more. And this is why when you make promises, I don't care if your ego is defined or undefined. If you make promises and you have not consulted your inner authority, you can destroy your heart. You can get vascular heart disease from healing yourself. I mean, especially actually if you have the ego defined, because then you can heal yourself trying to deliver because you made a promise and your ego is defined. So be very, very careful. If your ego is defined, 
be careful to make a promise because you're going to kill yourself delivering. If your ego is not defined, be even more careful. Don't make any promises. We are not here to make promises. It's just not what we're here to do. And if we do that, it just leads to uh, emotional crisis because this happens in between the solar plex and the ego. All right, let me know in the chat if I'm going too fast, if I'm give, giving too much information and uh, or if everything is clear. Okay, finally, before I can move on, I want to talk about uh, the emotional fear, the fear of tradition. So every gate that is in the solar plexus, I talked about it last time, uh, has also an underlying theme of fear. Just like in the spleen, there are underlying themes of um, um, of anxiety and fear for every gate. And the ajna, so the ajna, it's, it's, those are mental anxieties. The spleen are uh, kind of old fight or flight type of anxieties about our, our survival. And in the solar plex, uh, Ra calls those fears nervousness. So in the 37, this is where we get nervous about tradition. What does that mean? How do we get, what, what is the fear of tradition? In, and like everything else in human design, it can be a polarity. It could be one thing and it's opposite. So it could be the fear that the traditions that exist in my tribe are going to limit me, limit my expression, limit my freedom. I will have to, you know, my tribe has specific gendered limitation placed on women, for example. You can see how that can go. Um, so this could be the place where you're like, I am afraid that they're going to make me wear um, a head cover because I'm a married woman. And so, for example, right, I am a Jewish married woman. And right now, it so happened that my country, Israel, is in, in, in flames. And there is a, a, a very fierce battle going on about the, the shape and the, the, the way the country is going to run itself. And there's a lot of fear. And if you will see uh, the demonstrations from Israel, there's a lot of women. And I'm actually wearing red today in honor of that. There are a lot of women dressed as the handmaids from the handmaid tale, the handmaids, um, and they are voicing the fear. They're, they're trying to make the point that they are afraid that if the government that is now in power and is trying to um, do many things, uh, one of the legislation proposed was that women will be thrown in jail for six months if they go to the uh, holy places in Jerusalem and they will not be dressed modestly. Just for one example, that is something that scares me. This is a place where tradition can be very scary. Um, the other side of fear of tradition, it could be, you can look at the complete other side of that same debate. And it could be the fear of those people who honor a certain tradition and how they are afraid of some woman showing her elbow in the wailing wall. And they're like, we need to throw these people to jail because we are afraid they're going to break our tradition. Yes, yes, yes. The tribe is just so charming. All right. So this is the kind of stuff uh, with everything that has to do with the tribe. You're always going to have some bloodletting, some violence potential in those channels. Nothing to be done about that. All right. Let's talk about the earth polarity and also the channel mate gate 40 a little bit more quickly. It's the gate of aloneness. It's a very aloof gate. Um, again, as I told you, it's a very interesting connection. I have a lot of 40s in my life. They're very attractive for, for I mean, the 40 uh, is very attractive for the 37 and the 37 is very attractive for the 40. It's one of those places where you know, unlike, for example, the 515, if you have the five and somebody else has 15, you just drive each other nuts because five is a logical gate of, of set rhythms and times. And the 15 across from it is the, the, the complete opposite of extreme rhythms. And so, you know, my husband has the five, my son has the 15. When my son takes 15, 20 minutes to put his shirt on in the morning, my husband can lose his shit because it's just like, I cannot with the extreme rhythms, right? Um, unlike that, I think the 37, 40 are more compatible. They have a lot of kind of sparks and attraction. The 37 wants to get um, the 40 
it wants to get it to come work with it. And the 40 can be a little bit like, mm, I want to be alone, but it's also very attracted to the emotional loyalty of the 37. All right, so it's the gate of aloneness, the will or lack of will to provide for the needy, right? So see, so that's the thing with the 40, and that's why the 40 is... Um, in many ways, a lot like the 49, um, it's friend from downstream because both of them are the places where it's, the, you know, it's kind of like, mm, do I want to give you what you need? And do you deserve to get what you need? Because unlike the collective where everybody deserves the same, the tribe just doesn't rhyme like that. That's just not how it goes. The tribe wants to feed those who belong to the tribe and are not interested in feeding those who do not belong. All right, Ra says, the gate of willpower, gate 40, not an awareness center, okay? The ego is not aware, uh, and therefore not everyone has access to this, right? So 37 embraces the 40 and offers the only thing the ego is vulnerable to, which is loyalty. So you can kind of see the dance we're, we're looking at here. All right, I want to highlight a couple of things from the uh, gate lines. Uh, line, line one, which is always the foundation of the hexagram and tells us where um, where the, the, the hexagram foundation lies, is called the mother and father. Uh, and it's uh, this is a quote, friendship rooted in sensitivity to ensure harmony. So you see, when I said earlier on that this is about harmony and balance and uh, definitely quantum human design, I think she calls it the gate of peace, which is really confusing to me because uh, uh, gate 11 in the traditional Ching is peace. So I, 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 didn't, I, I really didn't even write that name for this because to me it's confusing. But, but Karen Carrie Parker does emphasize that gate 37 is all about friendship rooted in sensitivity to ensure harmony and pay attention here. This line is one of the very few that has no polarity, meaning there is no detriment. It's it's very interesting, right? So another interesting thing that Russ said is that up until the 1960s, this was tilted to the side of the father. And this is when you look at our history, it, it was in the 1960s that we kind of had the reawakening of the goddess and, um, the 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 yin element going kind of there's still a ways to go right but but trying to reclaim the matriarchal power we know that in traditional societies there were matriarchies there were societies that were organized around uh the matriarch around the mother figure around the, around the power and the values of women uh and that got tilted uh again according to Ra's analysis he talks about homer and the greek as the ones who kind of screwed us up um, and started humiliating the female power and suppressing it. Um, and then in the 60s, when we, and I'm not going to talk about all of the astrology, especially because I'm not an astrologer. And so I'm happy to get uh, insight from those of you who are watching this and might add information about that. But there were a confluence of things going on that starting from the 1960s, started raising this back into the energy of the mother as well, coming to be equal with the father. If you look at line two, line two is very interesting here. It talks about responsibility. So friendship through individual responsibility, but in the detriment, it could be a, a place where you point at other people's responsibility, right? And that's a little bit like, you know, the gate two is always um, the, the natural gift, the person that, that they don't know what they are. It's us looking onto them that we are projecting on the twos. Oh, you are this. So we can, we can be projecting on the two. You are responsible for your own, you know, holding your own. And what is it responsible for? It's always for the bargain, right? Holding your end of the bargain. Um, and so it's an interesting, just, I think it's really interesting to see the progression of what, is the content of those lines uh, in the gate of friendliness and family? It's about it's about sensitivity to other people, friendship, loyalty, and right harmony, responsibility. And then, if you look at line three, which is the line I have, it's even even handedness. So it's the sensitivity to know what behavior is appropriate in the friend in friendship and in family. But in its polarity, it could be 
you, that you don't know what is, and you don't have the sensitivity, you, you lack sensitivity to know what behavior is appropriate in family and friends. And uh, I'll just add this um, to deadline line three. What this is about is uh, a lot of the time, it's about having the same rules apply for everybody, right? You can't have, uh, it's not appropriate to have, a, it's a, even handling this means, right? It's like, if you have a son and you have a daughter that everybody should, um, well, at least in, in my opinion, right? And you want to be even handed. You don't want to, you know, give one more than you give the other. You don't want to, uh, give, you know, the same behavior cannot be punished in one person and celebrated in another person. Um, that's a lot of time, it's kind of interesting. You know, it's like, it's like, me as a parent, I'm on my phone 24 seven. I can't ask my, I can't tell my kids, you can't be on your phone. It's not good for you. I need to serve as a role model, right? And it's not fair. It's not even ended to say, well, you can be on your phone. If I can demonstrate to them that I myself am trying to control that same behavior. So again, this is all about the bargain. Uh, line five is very interesting. So I decided to include it here too. It's the only, it's one of the only, I think it's the only line that has the word love, but definitely the only one in the ego circuit that has the word love. And then it has its polarity hate. So interesting, right? The line five of the gate of family and friendship is about love and hate. It's natural harmony and sharing that's possible through friendship. So what is love in the ego? Love for the ego, for that part of the heart. And you know, guys, we'll get to the G and we will get to the Sphinx and we will get to the vessel of love. And that's a whole other type of individual love. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of time to cover that later on this year. But in the ego, love is about this natural harmony and sharing, sharing, right? That's the support. Um, it's not that sharing of the of the collective. It's it's that sharing the food with your tribe member, sharing the love, sharing the food. Um, that's possible through friendship. And then in the detriment, it's the possibility of dependency turning love to hate. So if you uh, are too dependent on me and you're not holding your end of the bargain, this is where the most loving energy of love can deteriorate and kind of fall into hatred. So a lot of crazy stuff. All right, potential creative troubleshoot. So a couple of points here. Um, this is all about finding, securing, and dealing with tribal support and the bargain. Uh, it's operating as a potential awareness through touch. It's a very touchy-feely energy. As I said before, it's about hugging, uh, friendship. It's relevant for corporations and collaborations. A uh, possible creative block can happen when the 40 on the other side remains aloof. So again, I'm trying to kind of highlight the places where this could become a part of your writer's block or your creative block. Uh, think about your the bargains that you have around your, wherever it is that, that, that you're expressing your creativity and pay attention. This is about kind of communal expression, right? Not so much individual expression, but places where you express your creativity, um, the creativity of the tribe, if you will, um, or the tribal relationships that can support the individual or the collective person, right? Or the logical person, whatever it is. We all live and reside in tribes. We all, we all have our family, and you may not live with your family. It could be your tribe of roommates. It could be your tribe of artists. It could be your fellow uh, video makers, uh, influencer, wh whatever you are, your fellow coaches, your other scientists, right? Um, I am an academic. Academia is a very logical collective place. But when I left academia, I my 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 other business that's not the human design business is called Academic Writers Unblocked because these people are my tribe. I have a bargain with them that I can help them write their beautiful books and teach them how to do that without getting, um, um, you know, without succumbing to writer's block, without suffering with joy, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason that I, you know, knock on wood, it's always been easy for me to offer practical solutions. And I'm a 5-1, so, you know, if a 5-1 has practical solutions, um, they make money, right? So I'm not a millionaire, but I was able to replace my university salary by offering practical solutions for my 
tribe members, which are not every academic, but academic writers who find it hard to connect to their creative passion within the structures of academia. That is my tribe. Academic moms, academic, right? So I can go on and on, but I'm telling you all of this to offer you the opportunity to look around and think about who are your people? What is your tribe? Who do you have uh, innate kind of kinship with, innate friendship with, innate family, and it doesn't have to be a blood family, um, kinship to, these are the people that you want to make sure, especially if you have key uh, areas of definition that are tribal. And I only have like maybe three tribal gates. I don't have a tribal channel, but those gates, ooh-wee, they are in important places. I have my conscious son in the 1995, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, I have the 37, as I told you. It doesn't matter if you only have one or two. You want to understand how those energies in your chart work. So pull up your chart, look at your creative, at your ego um, circuit, see if you have anything defined, and try to kind of explore in those places who are the people that are in your tribe um, that you can cooperate and collaborate with. All right. Oh, so then possible creative block can happen when you have the 40 on the other side, like the, between the 40 and the 37, right? There could be, uh, I'll tell you another thing about that. Uh, my my bestie, you know, one of my best, but like my best friend from when I was in academia, she has the 40, I have the 37. And it's really interesting. I remember hearing Russ saying one time that the 37 can stay very balanced and in harmony with the 40 for the longest time like as a 37 and this is it's funny for me because I hardly ever ever have any kind of conflict with that friend of mine but if I, like for a prolonged period of time I feel that she's not holding her end of the bargain and it's like I project that onto her you know I have it in line three she's in line five never mind um I will stay calm and I will kind of in a very harmonious, friendly way, we'll try to kind of say, and, you know, I'd be like, hey, you know, this is, but the moment that I feel that I've tried and I've tried, I've been friendly and her 40, right, is not giving me what I need, that it's not meeting my end of the bargain, the explosion that can happen. Now, how funny is that? to actually know human design and being able to see, because think about this in a relationship. We have a very harmonious relationship. We have a really good connection with the 37 and the 40. We work well together, we collaborate, we write books together, like each, each of us, even when we write our own books, we always, right? And suddenly there can be these moments, like especially around, oh, she said she would come and then she doesn't, or, you know, she said she would do something in a certain time frame. And suddenly I feel this, I'm also a manifester, this explosion of anger, right? And both of us, we used to get very confused. <laughs> like, why, why are we fighting? Why are you so angry? Now that we've discovered that we have this uh, dance between us, it's been a really, now we can laugh at it. Now it's like, hey, listen, 40, I'm getting a 37 angry at you, right? So this is the kind of beauty and magic where you start understanding the energies you're working with. All right, so possible creative block when the 40 on the other side remains aloof. There is love and hate here, so it's a very emotional energy. Um, and then I'll, maybe I'll finish with that because, yeah, uh, Ross says when he talks about the 37, uh, I don't remember the line, but he talks about the 37 can get very shocked by the rejection from the 40. The 37 can be stunned by rejection, and then he, the 37 goes like, ah! <gasps> I didn't know people can be so mean, right? So he talks about the Jehovah Witness 37 that goes and knocks on doors to try to, you know, proselytize. Um, and the kind of rejection that a 40 on the other side of the door would give that person like knocking on their door, trying to hook them, right? Trying to hook them into their religion. Um, and that, you know, as a 37, every time I listen to him talking about that, it makes me laugh out loud literally lol because i am like that i get so shocked i i find it so hard to believe 
when somebody doesn't want my friendship and I'm like, hi, I'm giving you the 37 smile. Would you give me or whatever? And, you know, whenever people that I think should want to collaborate with me or cooperate with me in whatever way are, you know, not just that they say no, because that can happen. But I think you know the difference when it's a 40. It's this cutting rejection. There's a wall that comes down. It's like, no. And me personally, I go like, <laughs> people can be like that? I don't know. How come? Like, I don't know how to be like that. Okay, my friends. So we've managed to cover the 37 uh, and the 40 today. And uh, let me know, you know, if you have any more questions. We have gate um, com coming up, uh, gate 63, 64. I'm going to look real quick to tell you uh, when I think. I probably will do a Friday session for, um, uh, so today's Wednesday, but yeah, Friday is going to, we're going to be in line three and Saturday, we're going to be in line four. So I might do it Saturday. Uh, we will see. Uh, and it's going to be 63 is actually going to be in the sun and 64 is going to be in uh, the earth. Um, those are very interesting energies as well. More on that when we meet. Um, I'm going to end the uh, YouTube, uh, sorry, the live stream on Facebook right now. Uh, friends, if you are, uh, on the Zoom and you have questions, let me know. If you're watching this uh, on Facebook after I've finished my live and you have questions, always feel free to send me the questions. You can post them on the group. You can send them to me via chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can write your questions in the um, YouTube chat. And also don't forget to subscribe um, to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, guys. And I will see